guys doing out there, man? Yeah, I bet you didn't think you're going to get this episode today, did ya? I actually moved the episode from this morning over to Bitch Shoot. Yeah, with all the stuff going on right now, yeah, it's going over on Bitch Shoot. Uh, most of the edgier stuff I'm going to be doing is going to go over to Bitch Shoot. Uh, not the biker news or anything, but if I have uh, thoughts or anything, it's going on Bitch Shoot. Let's just put it that way. If you guys want to go over there to subscribe to Bitch Shoot, you can. The link is in the description box. Sad state of affairs when you got to do that kind of stuff, isn't it? I remember when we first started out on here, man, I was swearing and all that kind of stuff, going nuts. And now it's like so damn PC, it is unreal. If you do not hold their viewpoint, you're being taken down. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So uh, we uh, went to some alt tech sites, meaning alternatives to the bigger ones. Like we're on Parler now, we're on Rumble, we're going to get that sucker going. Uh, but BitChute right now, we've been, uh, cause what BitChute usually did was take our videos from YouTube and just transfer them over. But, uh, with us taking down, uh, my thoughts on what happened, uh, in the Capitol and the politics behind it, I was like, yep, n no more, ain't happening, not taking a chance with it. Uh, if you guys haven't visited HarleyLiberty.com, go over there. I actually uh, was working on some uh, information about what we're doing in the future and stuff on the channel. Uh, we're going to start getting uh, the interviews started back up. Uh, we haven't been doing that for a while, but we're going to do that. A lot of the interviews are going to be focused around biker rights. We really need to get that out there, man. We Nobody hardly talks about it, and that's what we're going to focus on in interviews and stuff. I know a lot of people are into the motorcycle club scene, which, hey, is cool. But I really want to focus on club rights, biker rights, all that kind of stuff. So if you're in a bait, MRF, all that, yeah, we're going to try to get you guys on to give a better story that is happening within the scene. Because there's so much more to what we do, what we live, than just one segment. We got to start spreading it out, man. Uh, I got a great question today uh, from Family Life 4211 I also want to send out a thanks to Big D for uh, all the support that he has for the show. That rocks on, man. Uh, can't wait to uh, meet up with him and ride. It'd be a good deal. You know, we rode with uh, Greg, and uh, Rumble in the Woods should be a good one. So, before we get started on the question, troll! Yes, I got a troll. Uh, this guy is one that don't like putting his face out. You might have seen it in the chat room. He won't identify who he is. He won't. He wants to come on the show, but just like everybody else, he's going to go through the process of verification. Do you really think that I'm going to have a Jerry Springer freaking show? That would disrespect all the people that we've had on before. Everybody from uh, NCOM, National Council of Clubs, freaking uh, international presidents of MCs, and a lot of uh, hitters within the scene. So I will not disrespect them without verifying who the hell you are. You know, that is the biggest thing in the world is a coward who don't want to show their face. I think they're gumps. I think they're freaking worthless freaking people looking for, you know, some attention. So we will, if he wants to come on the show, verify him, who he is, what he does. Is he have any freaking uh, connection to the club scene? Does he have any connection to the biker scene? Does he even ride? 
that's the stuff we verify when we have people coming on. Uh, most of the interviews are going to take place over on Sundays, uh, the Bring It to the Table uh, segment. Uh, actually, we're switching from doing phone interviews to Zoom calls where you can actually see everybody talk. Uh, I think that's a better th deal. Now, you'll still be able to hear it over on uh, our podcast platforms like Spotify, iTunes, all that deal. Uh, I do recommend Radio pa Public. Uh, a lot of good stuff over on that app. Uh, but again, you can listen to us everywhere, Google Podcasts, whatever you want to do. Uh, you still be able to hear everything that's going on. But I think the Zoom for uh, BitChute, uh, YouTube, Facebook, I think people will really enjoy that. Uh, so we're going to be uh, starting interviews up. Uh, we're going to try to do at least four a month. Uh, on Well, again, it's going to be on a Sunday. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. If you want to know what we are doing on the platform going forward, uh, this year's kind of plan, uh, you can go over to HarleyLiberty.com and you'll see it pop up over there. Now, got an awesome question here. Now, these are the questions I really like. Again, I get it. Everybody's into the MC stuff. There's other, ch you know, we're going to cover them still in the biker news, but as an opinion segment, we're not going to cover the protocol stuff. If you have to go to the internet and get advice on MCs, what to do, I don't know what to tell you, man. I really don't. I say go out there, introduce yourself around, go to some freaking uh, events like swap meets. They're always there. It ain't that hard to walk up to one and say, hey, how you doing? like to get to know you guys. Uh, I really support you. You're not going to get anywhere with internet advice, man. You're not. You're not going anywhere with it. Nothing's going to happen for you. You're the one who has to take the first step. So this question really good one man and this comes from family life 4211 over on youtube hollywood here is a non-club related question thank god have you heard of a few states allowing bikers to run red li uh, lights legally like i'm here in your state y'all can treat a red light as a stop sign I believe it is HB 2860. What are your thoughts on that? And do you think it will cause bikers to get crushed by a cage? Me, I think it's good legislation and wish it would come to Washington State. Since a few of my friends ride bikes that aren't heavy enough to trip the sensors. Even my road glide won't trip a few in my area. Rock on. Okay. Uh, in Illinois, there is that law, but it's not what you think. It's not a, a stop sign type of deal, and this is from Patch out of Lamont that explains it. Again, you you can't treat it like a stop sign. You got to let uh you know some time pass to see if it trips. I'm a big supporter of it. And the reason why I'm a big supporter of it is I don't think that you have to worry more or less about crossing through it. I always worry about the idiots that are going to smack you from behind. Because you never know, especially at nighttime, unless you got some good LED brake lights or something happening on that bike. You know, there's a lot of riders that get plowed through. And you're right, a lot of bikes ain't heavy enough to trip those sensors. Which sucks, man, really. They didn't have motorcycles in mind when they did that. Uh, but that actually went into effect a while ago. Uh, the new law lets motorcycles, uh, bikes run red lights legally. Uh, 
here's the deal. If light fails to turn green in a re uh, reasonable period of time, what I usually do is if it if I'm the only one pulling up to that stoplight, there's nobody behind me, any of that stuff. What I usually do is wait for one cycle, meaning if I'm sitting there and it won't turn red after the next round is when I go. And I haven't had a problem with doing that. Just give it a reasonable po uh, period of time. Now, if a cop sees you using it as a stop sign, that's when you got the problem. <laughs> uh, let's read through this article real quick. Most of us have been there waiting at a desolate intersection for what seems like an eternity for a red light that just will not change. So true. Because that let's be honest, man, when they're doing the road work and all that stuff, they're not doing it for motorcycles. Uh the wait for some more motorists, uh, namely motorcycle riders and bicycles, just got shorter. The law went into effect back then in uh, January 1st. It allows motorcyclists to proceed with caution through an intersection if the light fails to turn green within, again, a reasonable period of time due to a signal malfunction or simply because the vehicle does not have enough weight to set off the ground sensors. Now, in November, again, this is years ago, uh, both houses of the, the Senate and the uh, House of Representatives overrid uh, then Pat Quinn, and they did pass House Bill 2860. Uh, it does not apply to Chicago, stipulating that the rules effective only in with fewer than 2 million residents. Uh, the legislative officer at the time for Will County Abate said motorcycle enthusiasts has been pushing for a similar law for quite some time. Again, this is not Chicago. See, Chicago gets all kinds of freaking different uh, laws than the rest of the Illinois uh, has to follow. Uh, but this is good for us. Um... Under the new law, when a motorcycle comes up to a red light or a left turn uh, arrow and sits there and the sensors do not recognize that the bike is there, they can proceed as if though it was a four-way stop. Now, that you got right. But you still got to allow time to come up. Uh, ABATE, which stands for everybody knows that, uh, strives to preserve the universal right to safe and unrestricted motorcycle environment. That is why it's so important for you guys to get involved in ABATE, because I know you want this in Washington. What you're going to want to do is get involved with ABATE, bring it up to your local ABATE chapter, and start freaking uh, like everybody else does. Uh, get some people in there to twist some arms of legislatures uh, to get it passed. Now, you guys, on the other hand, were able to pass the motorcycle profiling uh, deal out of Washington, which Illinois, I hopefully it starts uh, working on something like that. I'm going to be a big push of that one. I'm going to get a hold of the local abate and say, hey, it's time to do this. Uh Abate, of course, this was back then. I'm just, you know, giving you a, a freaking overview of it. Uh, if a rider is pulled over, he can very politely show it to the officer that it is not to wave it in the face of cops. Uh, now, there is a minimum time, I guess, uh, 120 seconds, something like that. So, that is the uh, law on that. Do I approve of it? Yes, I do. Because, again, I don't want to get hit from the back. Uh, I think that's one of the most... That and left turning, man, with these uh, cagers. When they turn left and stuff, and then they claim that they don't see you. I believe in... Uh, hopefully, you guys can get past the... Uh, but that's going to go through A-bait or MRF or something like that to get that kind of law. 
uh, because it is a lot safer. It ain't just about sitting there waiting for a, you know another car to pull up to you to trigger those signals. It's about safety, I believe. It's terrifying, and everybody who's on a bike knows this. It is terrifying to have to look in your mirrors wondering if that car behind you is going to stop. Because the number one deal is when they claim that they haven't seen you. Oh, uh, you don't see... Uh, well, nighttime I can see because uh, lights on a bike, if they're not lit real good, uh, you can hardly see. But during the daytime, there is no excuse whatsoever uh, for that freaking excuse that you hit freaking a bike because you didn't see them. So hopefully, uh, Family Life, that uh, answers your question there. Yes, I do support it. And uh, for all the other states out there, I suggest getting involved with Abate. That's why I always say, even if you don't want to get hardcore into it, go to the meetings, all that kind of stuff, at least pay the dues where you help them out. Because a lot of this stuff is expensive, man. There's a lot of freaking traveling in this. Uh, there's a lot of hard work that's put behind it. So it does take some money. It really does. Especially when you want to get a new law passed. Again, I'd like to see uh, the law that was passed in uh, Washington State against motorcycle club profiling or biker profiling because it don't matter if you wear a one piece, two piece, three piece patch. There's been profiling of that. Even profiling of hog members, man. You got to remember that. It's just not the MCs that are going through it, man. It's riding clubs the whole nine yards. That's why you have to stay involved. So hopefully uh, that answered your question, Family Life. It is pretty cool. Uh, it's been around a long time. I don't think uh, it's been abused. Uh, if Now, on lane splitting... Uh, I think they got that in California that is not allowed here in Illinois. Uh, but lane splitting, man, it's kind of a divided type of deal, man. That's some dangerous stuff, especially when, you know, you're in traffic and trying to get through. Uh, even if the cars are all at a dead still, you know, there's somebody that could be an idiot. What do you got, like... Uh, Four or five feet between uh, the two lanes? I don't know, man. What do you guys think about uh, lane splitting, man? That's one thing that is controversial among everybody. Uh, I don't know, is there statistics, if there's any accidents that happened while somebody was trying to uh, get through traffic? I don't know. But I do know that there hasn't been any abuse of the red light stuff. You know, bikers are usually smart, man. They know when they work hard to get a law or something like that, that they're not going to abuse it, man. Because they know there's a lot of work involved in that. So, anyway, let's get to our news and all that good stuff. Take a quick commercial break. Head over to ProudHooligan.com for all your insane throttle official merchandise, including... Our new Proud Hooligan line, ProudHooligan.com, has a wide assortment of gear to make you look good on your next ride. ProudHooligan.com is the go-to for every biker when they want to look good as well as to help the show out while doing it. Visit ProudHooligan.com now. Rock on. Okay, over on HarleyLiberty.com, baby. Uh, again, this is where you can see uh, what I was talking about, what we're going to do before we uh, go to the other ones I'll show you. Uh, the Hells Angels movie inspired by book to start shooting. Now, that was the headline over there. Uh, Mark, the Unforgiven, uh, was by George Christie. I actually got a signed copy of it. It was a really good freaking book. And I really like that triumph in the picture, man. I'm glad he chose a triumph to do it. Uh, but anyway, this is going to be based on what he wrote. I believe it's being uh, shot overseas. Uh, 
uh, the agency that is doing this uh, announced in a statement that a new addition to the cast is a Cuban American actress, Tracy Ann Horace Lopez. Uh, she is actually, well, she's a TikTok sensation. Uh, no nonsense. She's going to be acting as a no nonsense uh, chief prosecutor for the organized uh, crime task force investigating the motorcycle club marked the unforgiven and his ties to the chicago mob <laughs> why is it gotta be <laughs> couldn't you do new york anyway quote we are very excited that such a talented and accomplished shakespearean actress is taking on the role of samantha El elja over 1,000 actresses auditioned for the role, but in the end, we felt that Tracy was the best fit for the real-life uh, drama. Uh, she graduated from uh, Manhattanville College in New York, where she attended the theater department on a scholarship and was in real life a highly respected uh, assistant district attorney who worked in the district attorney's office and uh, in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, then the producer uh, talks about uh, next week regarding two Hollywood uh, stars have agreed to be part of the cast. Uh, the Spanish Communications Agency, which promotes Hollywood productions, explained that marked the unforgiven is the story of former Navy recon sniper Jack Crest who returns home to Ventura, California from Afghanistan. Uh, he becomes the protege of Big John, played by George Christie, and the two form a motorcycle club uh, comprised only of veterans, Marine Recon, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, Delta operators, and a Coast Guard captain. Wouldn't that be something else, a club like that? Uh then it, uh, you know, there's 38 Spanish actors and actresses were chosen from over 2,000 applications. Uh, the first casting call was done online, uh, but that will be coming up. And that's from uh, George Christie. Uh, you know, we'll follow the story and stuff like that. And uh, hopefully it goes good for him, man, because it sounds like a good ideal. Uh, then you can go uh, over to uh, to see the article I was talking about. Biker News isn't all just about motorcycle clubs. Biker News is a, about a whole lot more. So that's over on HarleyLiberty.com. Go over and check that out. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. I always forget to turn my damn phone off. <laughs> that's pretty bad, isn't it? Uh, turning it off right now. Sorry about that. Anyway, you can find all that kind of good stuff over there at the members only area if you join uh, the Harley Liberty or the YouTube one. Now, let's go over to... Yeah. Remember when we covered this story where uh, a guy uh, killed the biker up in Wisconsin because uh, he thought he was a white supremacist? Well, man accused of running down, killing a biker because the victim was white, has been found incompetent. A Mexican-American man from Wisconsin charged with homicide as a hate crime because prosecutors say he intentionally crashed his pickup truck into a white motorcyclist has been committed to a psychiatric facility. 37-year-old Daniel Navarro of Fond du Lac was charged with first-degree uh, intentional homicide with a hate crime enhancer for the July 3rd crash that killed Phil Philip Thiessen in Fond du Lac County. Uh, prosecutors say Navarro struck his motorcycle head-on, uh, and he uh, judge ruled Wednesday that he's not competent to stand trial. Authorities uh, uh, say Navarro told investigators he had been harassed by co-workers and neighbors, poisoned, drug, and verbally attacked by white people. Uh, let's look a little bit at this one if There's we got it. There's a sadness at the Fondy Food Pantry where retired Unreal. police officer and former Wisconsin DEI agent Philip Thiessen has volunteered for the past two years. Just a bundle of energy, fun, um... Typical, he would come in in the morning to help with the unloading a truck and 
say, so how are you, Phil? And he'd say, I'm blessed. Every time, almost every time. So to learn he was killed on this stretch of roadway last Friday night, and what authorities are calling a hate crime is shocking to those who knew Thiessen. Extremely wonderful. Could have helped him if he had. The sheriff's office says Daniel Navarro admitted hitting Thiessen head on just because he was riding a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Navarro told detectives that he believed the person driving the motorcycle was white because in Wisconsin, white people drive Harley Davidson motorcycles and that the Harley culture made up of white racists. The incident had nothing to do with Thiessen's law enforcement background, and the two men did not know each other. No indication that he targeted who was riding the motorcycle. Uh, who on it. He talked about that. Instead, Navarro, who is in court today for his initial appearance, told investigators he needed to kill people he perceived were racist, saying he believed he was being poisoned by his co-workers and neighbors, as well as being taunted by others because he was Hispanic. So that's a recap of the incident. Again, we talked about that on the last one, but the judge says he's incompetent, so are they going to freaking uh, throw him in a freaking mental facility for the rest of his life? I don't know. We'll follow it. Uh, up north, Ottawa. You guys make a real big deal when a clubhouse sells. Outlaw biker gang used uh, Hindenburg home as a clubhouse. Now it's on the market for 575000 Now... I doubt that is freaking uh, dollars. I think it's Canadian. Boy, did I learn uh, about that stuff. Uh, they go on to say it offers a glimpse into the inner sanctum of a local chapter of a notorious 1% motorcycle club. Uh, there's the outside of it. Uh, let's see here. Black and white house. Uh, then you can look in the house. I'm not going to read the whole damn story. Uh but that's what they're looking to get out of it. They're going after the name. It was an AOA clubhouse. Uh, but that from the Ottawa Citizen. Now, let's go over to Oz. Perth now. Uh, charges are dropped against a bikey boss's estranged wife, businessman, and associate. Uh, the strange wife of a common chair national president, Mick Murray, has been cleared of tax fraud in a bombshell development in court. Debbie Pittman, the former long-term partner of Common Cheryl National President Mick Murray and Graham Ritchie, a businessman who offered $1 million surety so Murray could go to Thailand while on bail. Both had charges withdrawn in the Melbourne Magistrates Court. Uh, they did not say why the charges have been withdrawn. Uh, Miss Pittman, who it, it was revealed in 2018 had left her husband, was accused of lying to the government about owning properties in the Melbourne suburbs. Uh, the the Cranbourne North woman was accused of falsely declaring to authorities in March of 2018 that she did not own any real estate and had not tr so transferred and given it away. Uh, by doing so, she was accused of evading a debt to tax office over $2 million. And she was accused of finance and taking ownership of two properties. So, yeah, that has been dismissed. And why, we do not know. Don't know. Uh, over to uh, Biker Dad. Sad state of affairs right here. Uh, man and child killed when motorcycle hits deer, then the van hits them. <sighs> uh, this happened in Florida. Uh, two people are on a motorcycle are dead after they hit a deer, then were hit by a van. Uh, the Florida uh, Highway Patrol says the motorcycle was going west on Charlie Day Road. Uh, two people were on the bike, a 53-year-old man and a 14, 14 year olds old. Uh, both of the people on the motorcycle were thrown off the bike. Then they were hit by the van. Both died uh, at the scene. So sorry to hear that, man. So sorry. Uh, Corey Graff's wall of uh, shame right here. Uh, let's see here. Chatham County Police Charge Officer fired 
after arrest on, again, child sex charges. Let's see. ...was fired after being arrested for sexual assault on a minor in Bryan County. Officer Christopher Crick was fired today after his arrest on Friday. Bryan County Sheriff's Office says the minor is someone who knew Crick. On Saturday, CCPD Chief Jeff Hadley spoke with the lead investigator from Bryan County, started the termination procedures against him. Crick is being charged with statutory rape, sodomy, and aggravated child molestation. Oh, my God. I hope he gets freaking sodomized and joint. Oh, Chicago. Well, <laughs> Chicago police officer arrested in alleged off-duty shooting. Uh, he was intoxicated when he got into a heated confrontation with another man before pulling out a gun and firing a shot at him last uh, fall on Southwest Side. <laughs> Uh, the bullet from Officer Joseph Cabrera's Glock 17 handgun did not strike the other man, but it led to the officer arrest on felony charges of aggravated discharge of a firearm and disorderly conduct. Cook County Judge Susanna Ortiz released the 20 or the 38-year-old Cabrera on his own recognizance during a bond hearing for him at the criminal court building. But she ordered the eight-year veteran uh, Chicago police officer to not possess any firearms or consume alcohol while his case makes it way through the court system. You really think he's not going to drink? Uh, it goes on to say at about 10 p.m. October 13th near 52nd Street and Monitor Avenue, the male victim and a female witness, both in their 20s, was sitting in a vehicle and parked about a block from the witness's home. Uh, Cabral pulled up in his personal vehicle behind them and approached the passenger side of the car. Uh, Cordero said before the officer asked if they were doing okay and needed an ambulance, the victim and witness were confused but said they were fine. She said Cabrera went back to his vehicle and remained parked behind the two feeling uncomfortable. The man and woman drove around the block. When they returned, he was gone, but then off-duty officer drove up and parked behind them again. This guy's a freak, man. He's a freak. <laughs> anyway, that's Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasts and platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Listen to our show on Radio Public, a free podcast app for iPhone and Android. Use their created playlist collections, download episodes while on Wi-Fi to listen without using mobile data, and you can stream the podcast episodes without waiting for the download. Download our Radio Public podcast app now. Rock on. Rock on, baby. Go over there and download that one. Then it's easy for you guys to listen to us. Real good uh, podcasting platform, radio podcast. We're also available over on uh, iTunes, Google Play, or, yeah, Google Podcasts. All that stuff, man. Uh, anyway, uh, great show to the day. Again, I moved the other one talking about uh, what happened in Washington, D.C. over to bit shoot that way i don't have to worry about them pro uh, problems anymore uh that's where all the uh, again it's gonna be all the freaking controversial stuff because they don't delete anything over there uh it's a true platform if you ask me uh if you guys got any uh questions on latest legislative stuff or you have something new in the pipeline Get it over to me at info at insanethrottlebikernews.com. Again, I'll see you on Sunday for bringing it at the table uh, at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. With that, I'll catch you guys later. Hopefully you enjoyed this show. It's going to be one of them weekends, man. I'll talk to you guys later. I say goodbye, vamoose, adios, ciao, so long, get your hat jack.